the Sikha is Chelek Yudbez, the Sikha of Bahar, Bahar Aleph, to Rashi Sikha, that will basically differentiate between a Rashi and a Teras Kayanim, which seem to be very similar, but they are truly very different. And in one simple explanation, we'll understand that the Teras Kayanim and the Rashi have two different purposes, and therefore, their explanations of the Pasik, though they seem similar, are actually very different. And of course, we will have a beautiful Hira at the end, a beautiful lesson. So this is about the halachas of Shemitah, about the din of Shemitah, that the seventh day, the seventh year, it's a Shabbos, Shabbos, it's a year of rest, Shabbos, La Hashem. Darshu B'Teraskernim, the Teraskernim, the Medrash says, Shabbos la Hashem. Kishem shenem of Shabbos Bereshi, Shabbos la Hashem. Kachnem of Shvi, Shabbos la Hashem. Just like by Shabbos Bereshi. And just so we know, when we say we're, throughout the Sikh, we use the term Shabbos Bereshi, we, we, we are not referring to the Shabbos of Parshas Bereshi. We are referring to the Shabbos Bereshi, which means the Shabbos of creation, the seventh day of the week. Every Shabbos is called Shabbos Bereshi because it is the Shabbos of the Sheshes Yimei Bereshi, so the Shabbos of Maise Bereshi, the uh, Shabbos of creation, the seventh day of creation. So just like by the seventh day of creation, it says Shabbos La Hashem, this is in the Aseret Sadibris where it says, Sheshes Yomim Taved, Uva Yem Ashvi, Shabbos La Hashem Alekecha, Leisasa Beikom Olacha, etc. It says Shabbos La Hashem by Shabbos Bereshi, by the Halachas of, Shabbos, by the Aseret Sadibris, by the Mitzvah of Shabbos, so too by Shvi, it's a Shabbos La Hashem. But he does not explain the relevance of it, he just compares the two. Who repeats Rashi? Who will gamkin drasha zu? Avo besinu lashon. Rashi brings the same, la, la, the same drasha, but in a little bit of a different choice of phrase, phraseology. Rashi says Shabbos La Hashem, Lishem Hashem, for the sake of Hashem. Kishem Shinev be Shabbos Bereshis. Just like it says by Shabbos Bereshis, Shabbos La Hashem. And obviously over there it means for the sake of Hashem, so too over here we're saying L'Shem Hashem. Vini bashka for Rishayna nira shebeza drashas techanam chadu. Seemingly at first glance both of these drashas, that of the Teras Kernim and that of Rashi, are both the same of the, with the same content, the same, the same message. That it says that comparing with Shbita and Shabbos, and both are Shabbos L'Hashem. Ava lafiza tzarech lov and tamash nim shebeneim. But very simple question. If both Rashi and the Teras Kerenim are coming to tell me the exact same thing, why does, there, why does there seem to be such a difference, so many differences in the choice of words between Rashi and the Teras Kerenim? And the Rebbe is going to bring three differences between Rashi and the Teras Kerenim. Aleph, Rashi v'pirushi mefarash teichem ad Rasha. Shabbos l'ashem l'shem Hashem. Rashi explains what the Drasha is about. What's the meaning of the Drasha? That, 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 that Shabbos l'ashem means l'shem Hashem for the sake of Hashem. Then he brings the raya that just like Shabbos Bereishis, La Hashem means L'shem Hashem. So to hear, if the Teras Kehanim see in Exodus Shava, Shabbos Neim Nema Shabbos La Hashem and Teras Kehanim, he does bring the comparison. Then in both of them it says Shabbos La Hashem. I will sasam v'leipirish teichlin and anilu mizal L'shem Hashem. But he does, but he's sasam. He's unclear. He doesn't uh, explicitly explain what is the meaning of the fact that they both say Shabbos La Hashem. So Rashi goes straight to the meaning of it and then brings a raya from Shabbos Bereshis. The Teras Kerenim brings the comparison without explaining the comparison, the meaning of the comparison. Beis Li'idach on the other hand, Kitzer Rashi, the cause of Stam Keshem Shnev B'Shabbos Bereshis. Rashi is more concise and just says stam simply kishem shenem b'shabbos bereishis just like b'shabbos it was said with regards to shabbos bereishis with regards to shabbos but teres kainim ma'irich teres kainim is more uh, wordy kishem shenem b'shabbos bereishis shabbos l'ashem kach nem b'shvi shabbos l'ashem so if so on the one hand we find that Rashi goes straight it goes straight to the point and he tells us what, what it means shabbos l'ashem and then he brings the raya and the teres kainim uh, Teres Karenim doesn't bring us what it means. But on the other hand, Rashi is very concise, very quick, very short, and Teres Karenim is more lengthy. And Gimel, the Teres Karenim, and Rashi, and Pama Beis, Shnur Ba Paris, and Shabbos Lashem, the Rashi, and Pama Rishen, and Pama Rishen, and Shabbos Lashem. The quote that this Sikh began with, 
Shabbos Shabbos and Yehi Eloi Shabbos Lashem comes from Pasuk Dalad. But earlier on in Pasuk Beis, two Pesukim earlier, it says, V'shav Sa'ad Shabbos Lashem. So with regards to Shemitah, it says twice Shabbos Lashem. Now Rashi, when Rashi's Drash of L'shem Hashem, Drash of L'shem Hashem, is on the first time it mentions Shabbos Lashem in Pasuk Beis. And the Teras Kayanim, when he comes to explain Shabbos Lashem, he only comes in, Shabbat, in Pasuk Dalit on the second time he mentions Shabbos Lashem. So why are Rashi and the Teras Kayanim Stellingzach, as we say in Yiddish? Why are they, they um, coming to explain two different Shabbos Lashems? So clearly, Rashi and the Teras Kayanim are not here for the same purpose. Because if they were, their, their drashas would have been much more similar. Clearly, they are coming for two different reasons. And that's what he's going to explain to us in his base. The Abir. It has been mentioned numerous times that the purpose of Rashi, when he comes to explain the Psukim in Chumash and Teda, is not to darshan, not to teach halachas, the laws of Teda, and the Farish Pashtos but to explain the meaning, the literal, the basic meaning of the Psukim. As Rashi himself expresses in Parshas Bereshis, Ani Lebasi Ela Lipsute Shalmikra. I came solely for the purpose of translating, of explaining the meaning of the Psukim. Conversely, the Teras Kayanim. Its purpose is to teach us the Halacha and the Drash and Teira. In Yonai Drasha Saksuvim, the Limud Halacha Sashiba and the Teras Kayanim, which is part of the Medrish and part of the halacha of Teirah, its purpose is to teach us what, how we can glean the halacha and the meaning of the laws of Teirah from these Tzukim. Therefore, because the Teirah's Kayanim and the Rashi are coming for two different purposes, this fundamental difference between Rashi and Teirah's Kayanim, the Rashi is coming to explain the literal meaning of the verses. And the Teras Kerenim is coming to explain the Drash and the Halacha. Explains why there is such, so many differences between Rashi and Teras Kerenim. Nekud HaSachilik ben HaTeras Kerenim lepirish Rashi hu. The basic difference between Teras Kerenim and Rashi. But Teras Kerenim did is the lineage of Halacha. V'ashen king kevalash ashto Rashi, he lefaris pshat ha-kasuf. The Teras Kerenim is coming here to teach me the Halacha, the concept, the relevance in Halacha that we learn from these Pesukim. And Rashi is coming to teach me the p- meaning of the words. Shabbos Lashem. Umizeh, proti, ashidu, yusmei, teras kerenim, lepidish Rashi. And therefore there is a difference. There are so many differences in the, ch- in the choice of words between Rashi and teras kerenim. Because Rashi is explaining the meaning of the verse. And the teras kerenim is explaining the halacha of the verse. Kiddle the kamon as follows. In other words, we didn't yet explain where in Rashi do we see the, the meaning of the verse? And where in the Teras do we see the Halacha? We didn't get into the details yet. But the, we just learned a very majorly fundamental aspect, which part of it we knew, but now we're seeing it implemented, that the Teras and Rashi have different choices of words because they're coming for different purposes. So now let's delve in a little bit deeper to understand what Rashi is coming to teach me. And later we'll understand also what the Teras Kerenim is coming to teach me. They're coming on the word Shabbos La Hashem. And Rashi explains that Shabbos La Hashem means L'Shem Hashem for the sake of Hashem. What does it mean L'Shem Hashem for the sake of Hashem? What does that mean? Yes, Mefarshim. It's Gimel. There are those who explain. Kavonas Rashi with L'Shem Hashem. The purpose of Rashi when he says L'Shem Hashem. Hakasuv milam deinu, the pasuk is telling us. Shashvisa mimulachas asad de b'shnas hashmita. Ein b'shnas lemenuchas adam. That the reason why we have to rest from doing work, agricultural work, work in the field during the year of shmita, is not because a person has to rest. A person is lazy, let's say, and he's been working for many years, six years, and now he wants a chance to take a break. So we tell him take a break for a year. No. That's not the purpose of Shemitah. Nor is the purpose of Shemitah because the field, for the benefit of the field, the field needs a break, needs a, a, a one year off from time to time. So in the, in the, in the years following, it should have this, the field should have the strength to produce at the top level. 
This is also not why we do Shemitah. Not because the person is lazy. Nor because the field needs it. Ela l'shem Hashem, l'shem kiyu, mitzvah z'kadosh baruch The reason why we're doing the mitzvah of Shemitah is for the sake of fulfilling the mitzvah of Hashem. Valzeh may be dying in Shabbos Bereshis, and therefore he brings the dying for Shabbos Bereshis. Shegam sham, so rechli is hashvisa l'shem Hashem. That also in Shabbos, that we rest on Shabbos for the sake of Hashem. So there are those who want to, this is the, the uh, uh, explanation that some of Farshim give, that when Ashi says the Shem Hashem, he's telling us that we're not resting because it's practical, because the person needs a rest, because the field needs a rest, but because the reason that we're doing it is because we want to fulfill the mitzvah of Hashem. Avul Kashal of Farish came appears to But the Rebbe says that this is not, it's difficult to understand this in Nashi. And in Aleph and Beis, he's going to look at it from two perspectives like a Maman of Shach. Is this the Pashto Pshat? Or is it not the Pashto Pshat? If you're going to tell me that, that the word L'Shem Hashem is not the Pirush HaPashit, is not the literal understanding, therefore Ashi has to bring a Raya from Shabbos Bereshis, then Rashi should have said it earlier. When Rashi, when the Pasik says with regards to Shabbos Bereshis, in Parshas Yisri, in the Seres Adibris, Rashi should have said over there, Rashi asked me because of Khan, Kishem Shanev Bishabas Bereshis. Over here, Rashi is referencing that, Shab- that, that Shabbos Lashem, which is said in the Seres Adibris about Shabbos, and over there he doesn't say anything. So if this is a Chiddush, if this is not the Kiddush HaPashat, and this is a Chiddush that L'Shem Hashem, that you have to keep Shviyas, L'Shem Hashem, just like Shabbos is L'Shem Hashem, then the Pasuk should have, uh, the Rashi should have explained it the first time Shabbos L'Shem was mentioned. And Beis, on the other hand, Im Tim Tzalema Shapiru Zehu Mashmuus, Yapsut Yashal Shabbos L'Hashem, if this is not a, 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 a deeper Pshat, but this is the literal understanding, Shabbos la Hashem, Shabbos for Hashem, for the sake of Hashem. Shalachem le pirish Rashi, midi b'shabbos b'reishis, and that's why Rashi didn't explain anything in Parshas Yisrei. Ela shabinidin di dan muchrich lefarshay, ki kan yishmakim litish pirish b'venacher, and the only reason he has to explain it over here is because a person could have erred, could have made a mistake, and said that I'm resting for the sake of the field or for the sake of the person and therefore Rashi has to say it over here but really it's a literal it, really it's a simple understanding of the Pasuk in a move on in that case we don't understand why does Rashi need a Raya? We find similarly where Rashi gives a similar interpretation on a Pasuk. For example, by the Pasuk, Rashi says, And Rashi didn't bring a raya that Li could be Lishmi. Also on the Pasuk in Parshas Kisisa. Kodesh Lashem, Rashi says, Shmiras Kiddushasa, the, the, the Shmira of Shabbos, the, 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 the keeping, the observing the holiness of Shabbos, Lishmi is for the, for the sake of my name, Uva Mitzvasi, and, my, and, and part of my commandment. And over there, Rashi doesn't bring a, doesn't bring a raya. Simple. Li Lishmi, Lashem Lishmi. So, Mumanashach, if if we need a raya because there's a chiddush over here, then why doesn't Rashi introduce the chiddush the first time around? And if the reason he doesn't do that is because there's no chiddush here, and this is the pashtup shot, then why does Rashi feel compelled to bring a raya? Seemingly, this is the literal meaning of the pasuk. Gibel. Third question that we have on this pirush. That cliche Hashem means that we do it for Hashem and not for the sake of the person or the field. Lama Maitik Rashi in of Tevas Shabbos. Why does Rashi include in the Dibur Maschil? Why does Rashi quote the word Shabbos? According to the above, Rashi is only explaining that La Hashem means Lashem Hashem. And therefore, therefore all Lashem Hashem. So all Rashi should have quoted from the Pasuk is Lashem. La Hashem and Hashem should attach to Hashem Hashem. Why does Rashi mention the word Shabbos? La Hashem, the word Shabbos. Ha Bir Baza, and therefore we come out to understand from the fact that Rashi mightik min akasim kam tevis Shabbos. Rashi is quoting the pasuk, the word Shabbos. Ki ba akushis shabakasuf. 
Because Rashi's Pirush is coming to answer the word Shabbos. Shabbos is what triggers Rash, the need for Rashi's Pshat. Teva Shabbos l'cherem yuteresi. Because the word Shabbos is extra. So he maschil v'shav v'shav aretz. The Prophet when he said v'shav, so the earth should rest, the land should rest. V'hava l'lameimah v'shav v'shav aretz l'ashem. The earth should rest Hashem. So Rashi is bothered by the extra word Shabbos. And therefore he includes the word Shabbos in the Debra Maschil and says, why does it say Shabbos? V'lochem mefarech Rashi l'shem Hashem. Kishem shenem of Shabbos Bereshis, and therefore Rashi says that the Shem Hashem, just like it said the Shabbos Bereshis, the Kavanosei lay the Fadish the Tevis la Hashem Pirushi la Hashem. Kis a move of the Pastus, the Nitzarech le Pirush. Rashi is not coming to tell me that the word la Hashem means the Shem Hashem, because as we said, that's that, that that's understood simply. You don't need to explain that. Ela de miyitur Tevas Shabbos le Meidim de Hashvisa le Shem Hashem de Shmita. We're learning that, that when it says Shabbos La Hashem, it's coming to tell me that the Shabbos, the Shvisa, the resting, that's La Hashem, that's being done the Shem Hashem in Shemitah, has to be just like Shabbos Bereshis. But I say how often the Shvisa Shabbos Bereshis in the same manner as the Shvisa of Shabbos. The way I'm understanding this, and I hope I'm right, only because I'm sharing it with you, is that it's where do you put the, 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 the comma? Until now, we, we read like this, L'Shem Hashem, comma, K'Shem Shenem V'Shabbos Bereshus. That the word La Hashem, or Shabbos La Hashem, means L'Shem Hashem for the sake of, of Shabbos. And the Raya is that just like V'Shabbos Bereshus is L'Shem Hashem, so too over is L'Shem Hashem. But we, that can't be the meaning because we just ask the questions. Why do we need the Raya? Or why do we... Why Elsewhere, and if he says it over here, and if he doesn't say it over there because it's Pashat, why does he bring a raya? He says, it's not a raya. Kishem Shnei Mishabbos is not a raya. It's part of the Pirish of Rashi. Take out the comma and say, Shabbos la Hashem, L'Shem Hashem, Kishem Shnei Mishabbos Pereshis. That Shabbos la Hashem has to be done for the sake of Hashem, just like Shabbos Pereshis. That just like with Shabbos Bereshis, there is something that's done the Shem Hashem. So too, or, or in the same manner that we do it for Shabbos, we do it for Shviyas. For Shemitah. Now, to go on Sivav. So you have to now wait until the Sivav to understand the comparison between Shabbos and Shviyas. But what we learned now is we now learned that we've changed the initial understanding of Rashi and L'Shem Hashem K'Shem Shunema B'Shabbos B'Reshis is one sentence that on Shavuos we do it in the same manner as we do it on Shabbos in a specific uh, 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 prat with detail which will be discussed in Se'ivav. So now we've, we've totally transformed the, our initial understanding of Rashi. And now we are, we're, we're, we're telling, the Rashi of here is telling us that on Shabbos, that on Shviyas, we're learning, we're comparing something in Shviyas from Shabbos, and that's what he means when he says, Kishem Shnei Mabish Shabbos Bereshis. Dalit. Now he's going to answer the, 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 the third question that we asked. Why does Rashi Shtelzach on the first Shabbos La Hashem and the Teraskeim on the second on the second? Uh, uh, La Hashem, on the second Shabbos La Hashem. And based on what we explained already in Ois Beis, that Rashi is here from Sudus Mikra, and, and the Tereskeinim is here for Drash and Halacha. Rashi brings this down in the very first time these words are mentioned in the Parsha. This question that Rashi has. Why does it say the word Shabbos? This question arises immediately the first time it says the words Shabbos La Hashem. So therefore, right away, Rashi has to come and explain that the reason why it says the Shabbos La Hashem is to tell me that the Shabbos, the Shavisa, and Shavis is the same as Shabbos Bereshis. But then, then the second time around, Rashi has no reason to explain anything. Because Rashi is relying on what was already explained earlier in the, in the two Pesukim before. And when you're talking about Pesukim Shomikra, not in Halach, he's going to say in the next paragraph, every word is Meduyek. And has to be explained. But in Sudish al Mikra, it is the way of the Psukim in, in, in many cases to repeat something that was already said 
uh, uh, even numerous times, several times. If something is being uh, 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 is being um, taught, if something new is being discovered in this repetition, it'll repeat the whole pasuk. Or in uh, the twelve, he mentions the whole parsha is repeated, uh, it's referring to the parsha of Hayaki Viacha, which we say when we put on film the Minutam. So it's repeating the whole parsha. Uh, in, in, in the, the, the second half of it is, a, is, is an entirely in, is entirely repetitive to, to the first half. So the question is, why does it repeat it? So Rashi says because there's one chiddush in it. The first part that says Veda which is the the, the 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 question of the Ben Rasha. The second the second time it says Vigalta which is the At Psachle, which is referring to the 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 She'ena Yadei Lishael, and the Pasha is telling us that you should open up with Divri Agada with stories to encourage the child to listen to what you have to tell him because he doesn't know how to ask questions. So, for the re- in order to tell you that word that 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 the, the, the At Psachle or the Lashon of Rashi with the Shetiftach Le Bedivri Agada Kedei Shemeshchin Asalev to to draw in the the, the She'ena Yadei Lishael, there's a whole Pasha that's repeated. So, for sure, sometimes a pasik or a word will be repeated even though it was already said because there's a chiddush there. And it says in parentheses, Esfiach. So the pasik, right, the next pasik is Esfiach, Ksircha Leisikshus, Invin Zecha Leisivser, Shna Shabbos and Yiyah Le'aretz. The chir of the pshat is that Esfiach is a davash in his chadish, but in other words, he's introducing the fact that also the Sfiach and the Invin Zirecha also are part of Sfiyas, and therefore he says Shabbos Lashem again. But there's no, there's no need for Rashi to explain it because it's normal for the Psukim and Psudish Mikra to repeat something because of a davash in his chadish, but because of the new teaching that's being discovered in these new Psukim. But in Teras Kerenim, where the Pshat, where he doesn't have to explain the Pshat Aksuvim, then just the opposite happens. But the purpose of the Teras Kerenim is to learn the Halacha. So therefore, the Teras Kerenim only only stops to explain the second time. The first time it says Shabbos last time, it's not coming for a drasha in Allah. It's coming to tell us that it should be L'Shem Hashem as Rashi explains. But the second time it says Shabbos last Hashem, that must be for a drasha. And therefore, the Teras Kerim says what the Drash is. So just like it says by Shabbos Bereshish, Shabbos La Hashem, so too by Shviz it says Shabbos La Hashem. So we've answered our second, our third question. Okay. Now, what is this drush of the teras kernim? What is the teras kernim bedarshaning when he wants to explain? When he wants to explain the reason why it's a Shabbos Lashem over here, so he's going to explain that in Oisei. And Oisei is going to come to explain that there's a certain halacha that one might have thought to, to include or to introduce when it comes to Shviyas. And the Shabbos Lashem is teaching me, is teaching me uh, uh, that when it comes to, 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 to Shviyas, we have to compare it to Shabbos. Where since in Teras he doesn't explain which Indian, which halacha is being learned from the comparison to Shabbos. But he sort of says it in a way, he leaves it open, he leaves it blank. It must be that he's not referring to a certain detail because if he wanted to tell us a certain detail, he would have said the detail. The fact that he says it in a very general way without going into the details, it's trying to tell me that there's a general concept in Shviyas that's being learned from Shabbos. We're learning something, not a detail in Shabbos, in, in Shviyas, but a general idea in, in, in Shviyas that's being learned from Shabbos. Behind Ubishneyem, Shabbos Bereshis U Shviyas, Namar Oisli Allah Shabbos Lashem. Since in both of them, Shabbos, Bereshis, and Shabbos, and Shemitah, it says the same Lashem, Shabbos, Lashem. 
And this shows that there is a comparison, that there is a tzadashave, a common denominator between the two. But it wasn't explained which one should be learned from what, which one. Do I learn Shabbos from Shviyas or do I learn Shviyas from Shabbos? Comes the Teraskeanim to tell me, Kishem Shenemar Bishabbos Chulu, Kach Nemar Bishviyas, just like it says by Shabbos, Shabbos Lashem, so too by Shviyas, Shabbos Lashem, Hainu She Shabbos Melamed Al Shviyas Vilele Hepach. The Shabbos teaches us with regards to Shemitah and Shemitah learning from Shabbos and not the opposite. That's what the Teraskeanim is coming to tell me. That's what the Teraskeanim doesn't explain the word Shabbos Lashem. We asked, and the question Aleph, why the Torah Shkenim doesn't explain what he's trying to say. Because he said everything he has to say. He's trying to tell us a general idea that we learn Shabbos from, we learn Shviyas from Shabbos, Shemitah from Shabbos, and not Shabbos from Shemitah. And as you said, the Kishem, Shenemar, Shabbos Be'i, Shabbos Lashem, Kachmem, Shviyas, Shabbos Lashem. The Shabbos Lashem is learned from Shabbos to Shviyas. Now, where would this relevance be? Now, where would the relevance be that I'm learning from Shemitah to Shabbos? Where, where would it be in the Gael and Maisa? The Yuvan Zalpi, Mashapirish, or Ravid. The Drasha Satiraskan, and the Indian Taste of Shvias. The Ravid actually has two Pirush he mentions in the Ha'ara, but in the second Pirush that the Ravid brings, he explains that the Teraskan is coming to teach me with regards to the, to the concept of Taste of we know that with regards to Shabbos, Midra Bonon, where there's an Indian to add a few extra minutes before Shabbos and a few extra minutes after Shabbos. It's called Taste the Shabbos. The question is, does the same thing apply to Shviyas? Do you have to start a few minutes or a few days or whatever it is, sometime early before Shviyas to stop working the land? So that the David says, the Yes Mefarshim Lahakim, Kedamarinim Mayud Katan, Ma Shabbos Bereishis Asura Lefaneh Ol Achreh Mutarin that Meid Katan it says that just like Shabbos it's also to do Malacha but before it and after it immediately Mid Eraisa is Mutar Av Shviyas He Asura Lefaneh Ol Achreh Mutarin but also in the year of Shemitah the year itself is also to do Malacha in the Sada but the moment before and the moment after is Mutar. Vainu and explains the Kshem Shaim and Atayra didn't taste this with Shabbos Bereshis. Just like when Atayra, there's no concept of taste with Shabbos. Kumarikain ain't din taste this with Shviyas. So too, when it comes to Shviyas, there is also no din of taste with and mutul zreya v'chulu b'sev shishis, and you're allowed to plant into the field even to the very last minutes of the sixth year. So that's the David's explanation. We're going to say now that the Teraskeanim is also, I mean, the, the, the David is explaining that the, the, the Teraskeanim is talking about Tesis Shvius. Why would the Teraskeanim have to explain this? Why would I think otherwise? So he's going to say, I'll be pastors, I would have thought that there should be a union of, te, of Tesis Shvius. And because of that, the David has to come and to explain us that from the word Shabbos Lashem, we learn from Shabbos that there's no Tesis Shvius. And this is based on this rivet that the Teus Kernim is coming to teach me about Teus Vishvi'is. We'll now understand why the Teus Kernim has to come with the Drasha. Based on the basic approach, on the initial approach, without a Limut from Shabbos Bereshis. That changes that, I would think, the Svara would be, the logic would be, Mechayeves Shishvi'is, Mechayeves Betesvis. The, the, the logic would tell me that Shviyas should be Mechuyil, that should be obligated with Tesvis with adding an extra time. Why? Because because of Namar Veshav Sa'ar at Shabbos Lashem, it says that the earth, Ha'aretz, the earth should rest Shabbos Lashem. Or if I turn the Pasuk, it says Shabbos Shabbos and Yil Ha'aretz. The Ha'aretz has to be. I mean, the Shmita, Ulida, Kshvisa, Sa'odo, Mimulach, Sa'sada. The concept of Shmita is not just that the person has to rest, has to take a sabbatical from working the field. Elagam Shvisa, Sa'aretz. Also, the earth has to rest. The land, the soil has to rest. The, the, the land, the, the, the ground itself has to be in a state of resting, in a state of not working, and not just that the person shouldn't do. 
If this is true, if this is the this is the svar, that the, that the audits has to rest, establish Then it would make sense to say that you shouldn't sow, you shouldn't plant in the end of the sixth year. Because then, if you were to plant on Erev Rosh Hashanah, the end of the sixth year, Erev Rosh Hashanah of the seventh year, then the 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 the, the, the earth, the land, the ground will produce and will grow and will reach ripeness all in shmita. And even if the person is not going to cut it down from the field, because of his work, because of his planting on Erev Shvius, during the year of Shvius, the Ares is not Shvisa. So I would have thought that a person should have to add on Tesvis Shvius, add on of some days or some time before, before the seventh year to make sure that whatever is happening to the ground that's happening before Shvius and not that during Shvius the earth is actually still working. And from the Limud, one from the other comparing Shabbos to Shvius, one could have made a mistake. The Shabbos la Hashem and Emer b'Shvius milam deinu a Shabbos bereishis that I could learn from Shmita to Shabbos she gamba mechuyavim b'Teisvus and that I would the Svarah would tell me that I need to have Teisvus Shvius to make sure that the earth doesn't doesn't work on on Shvius and then I would say that just like it's a Shabbos la Hashem and there is Teisvus Shvius I would think this is in the Havamina. That this will also apply to a regular Shabbos. That mean not Torah. There isn't a concept of Teisvus Shabbos. For the Teisvus Kain and Vedidish, and therefore comes the Teisvus Kain and tells me, "Kesheim shen nemar b'Shabbos v'chulu kach nemar v'chulu haynu halosh and Shabbos l'Hashem anich popoi." The fact that it says halosh and Shabbos l'Hashem again, Mad Gishu Malam Deinu is emphasizing and teaching us Shashvisa shall shana Shvis. He bedugmas the Shabbos l'Hashem from the fact that it says Shabbos l'Hashem a second time. Which is the first time Shabbos Lashem could mean Shabbos Lashem. I still wouldn't know what, where do you go from where. But then the Torah says another Shabbos Lashem, and that another Shabbos Lashem, as far as the Torah's kingdom is concerned, is Ledrashik Asino. It's coming to teach me something. What's it coming to teach me? It's coming to teach me that the she- that Shavuos is like Shabbos Lashem, is like Shabbos Bereishis. And you learn the laws of resting on Shmita from Shabbos Bereshis, not the opposite. And therefore, even though Apisvara, you would think to rest on, to, to, to add on time to Shviz, nevertheless, we learn, like the David says, that we learn from Shabbos that just like Midai Raisa, on Shabbos there's no taste with Shabbos, so too on Shviz, there is no. This actually also answers question base. Why the Teiras Kehenim is Meilich Keshem Shenem Shabbos Bereish Shabbos LaHashem? Because he's trying to emphasize over here that the reason it says Shabbos LaHashem is to teach me that I learned Shviyus from Shabbos and not Shabbos from Shviyus. Okay, good. So we've answered a number of questions already. We answered what, that, we, we, that there's a difference between Rashi and Teras Kayanim because Rashi is Tzutis Mikra and Teras Kayanim is Ledrash or Lahalacha. We explained that according to Rashi, L'Shem Hashem means for the, that, that, that on Shabbos Bereshis, that, that on, on Shviyas, there's a similarity to Shabbos Bereshis. We also explained in Oizdalid, we also explained the difference why Rashi tells on the first Shabbos Lashem because Lepshutu Shomikra, you have to explain it right away. And the second time, it, it, it's allowed to mention it more than once because there are extra details that are being included. And therefore, sometimes the Pasuk says extra words, Bishil Davrash and Eschadishba. But saying in the Teras Kehanim, which is coming the Drasha, the first one he doesn't have to explain because that's Pashto Pshat. That's the Shem Hashem, Api Pashtos. And the second one, the Drasha Kassini, comes to explain. And we explain what the Drasha is. The Drasha is to learn Shabbos, Bereshis, to learn Shviyas from Shabbos, Shmita from Shabbos. And he's coming to tell me not to add on Taisa Shviyas, which I would have thought to do if I was learning Shabbos 
from Shavuos. So, but now we have to go back and understand what was Rashi, what, what is L'Shem Hashem mean? We know what it doesn't mean, but we, 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 we explain, explain to the Gimel, but we don't know what L'Shem Hashem means. What is it coming to tell me? So this, I say, this concept is, 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 is a halacha concept. Do we have to keep a taste of shviyas? Do I not have to keep a taste of shviyas? This is something that would be relevant to the halacha. But if you're coming to Pshat, according to the, if you're following the way of Pshat, which is Dashi's way, as we said earlier, and as we know, have already learned and we know from, from so many occasions, Bliyai and Hara, Rashi is not going to tell Zach on this whole issue of, of, of uh, Taisa Shviyas. It's a halachic matter. So what is, the, what is Rashi coming to tell us? Kavonas HaKosuf. Shabbos Lashem, who the Lame Shashvisa Tarachlias Lashem Hashem, but Dukma Shabbos Bereshis. According to Rashi, Rashi is saying that the Shabbos Lashem on Shavias has to be just like the Shabbos Lashem on, on a regular Shabbos, which he already mentioned in the Sea of Gimel, but now we have to understand what that means. The Yuvanza, the Haktim, Beer, Dia, Kaloshan, Shabbos Bereshis, the Lay Shabbos Yamim. So let's understand that, but first let's ask one more question or one more diuk. It's not really a question. The fact that the that, that Rashi and the Teraskeya Nimr, the Rashi here, uses the terminology Shabbos Bereshis. Like you could have said Shabbos Yomim. Aldechaloshim and the Gelish Mita Shabbos Shonim. The, 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 the Gemara Yerushalmi uses the term Shabbos Shonim, the Shabbos of the years. Because the seventh year, Shabbos of the years. So he could have said Shabbos Yomim, the Shabbos of the days, the seventh day of the week. Which would have been simpler. Especially since we know for ourselves, I don't know about everybody, but I know at least for, for some people, the word Shabbos Bereshis is confusing. Shabbos is, you think, you think of the Shabbos that comes after Simchas Teireh, in which you read Parshas Bereshis. Even if you weren't going to think that, it's still, you could have just said Shabbos Yamim. Why is Rashi emphasizing and using the word Shabbos Bereshis? We're going to explain it as follows. On the Pasik, we make a Shabbos in the This is referring to the Oimer, the carbon Oimer, and it says in uh, last week's Parsha, Parsha's Emoir, that we make a Shabbos on the day after Shabbos is when the Koyen does the Oimer. Peter Shashi Rashi explains in Machas Yom Tvirish Shal Pesach. When it says in Machas Shabbos, it doesn't mean like the Baitusim said, that means that, 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 would mean, that they touched an immense Sunday. But Rashi says it means Yom Tiv. It means the Yom Tiv of Pesach. The Melchizedek of Shabbos means after the first day of Yom Tiv. She'im at the Oimer Shabbos Bereishis. Yet the idea is because if you were to say the Shabbos Bereishis means a regular Shabbos, you don't know which Shabbos. Melchizedek Shabbos after Shabbos after which Shabbos. So therefore, it must mean it must mean the day after Yom Tiv. What are we going to derive from this? Something else. V'hainu the Halosh and Shabbos Shayach Gam a Yom Tiv. So from this we learn that the term Shabbos could also mean Yom Tif. Because Bimachas HaShabbos, Rashi says Bimachas Yom Tif. The Shabbos Bereshis Sheilul Yom Tif. The word Bereshis, this excludes Yom Tif. The really, reason why Yom Tif is called Shabbos is because on Yom Tif you also rest. Not, the Allah is not exactly the same. But there's also a Shvisa on Yom Tif. So it makes sense to call Yom Tif Shabbos. When you say Shabbos Bereshis, you're referring to the Shabbos of, of Bereshis, of the, of, of the Sheshis Me Bereshis. So that obviously cannot mean Yom Tif. So the reason why Rashi says, the term, uses the term Shabbos Bereshis is to exclude Yom Tif. What does that mean? Vehabiu. The fact that the person was commanded to rest on Shabbos, and this is why the day is called Shabbos, Shabbos, from the word Shavisa of resting. Nemru, base time, there are two reasons that are brought in the Torah. One, in, which is Zechel and Maisa Bereshis. We're remembering Maisa Bereshis. Since the Avishter created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. Therefore, a person was commanded that he too should work for six days and rest on Shabbos. And that's what it tells us in the Aser Sadibres that is mentioned in Pashas Yisrael. The second reason why we observe Shabbos. 
Question Nehemiah by Sarah Sadibris, the Pashas verse Khanan. As it is mentioned in the second verse Sarah Sadibris, that is brought down in Pashas verse Khanan. The Zachar talk, he had the use of Beth Mitzrayim. You should remember that the Abish took you, you were in Evan the Mitzrayim, a Yiftachas, and the Kay the Ram. The Abish took you out of the Gaymar. Al Kay, therefore, because you were Evan the Mitzrayim. Hashem took you out, therefore, it's Sivchas, and the Kecha, last is to see him a Shabbos. Therefore, Hashem commanded to do Shabbos. So there's two reasons why we do Shabbos. One, Zechel and my is to remember that Hashem created the world in six days and rested on Shabbos. Two, to remember that Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. And that's what Rashi is emphasizing Shabbos Bereshis. Shavisa lezecher ma'isa Bereshis. The resting on Shabbos should be, or the resting on Shavis should be lezecher lemaisa Bereshis. To remember the creation. Bria so elam. V'shoyna baza shavisa de yantiv de yesh bazecher letzies mitzrayim. And this would be different than yantiv. Yom Tiv is not Zeichel L'maise Bereshis. Yom Tiv is only Zeichel L'tziyas Mitzrayim. And in the order he brings different psukim, Pesach is for sure Zeichel L'tziyas Mitzrayim. Because we're, Pesach is the moment on the Mitzrayim. Then comes Shavuos. Shavuos, they gave us the Torah. So there's a Pasuk in the beginning, Shmosh Gimel Yud Beis, where it says, Be'etziyach HaSam Mitzrayim, Tavdun HaSalakim HaRazay. The whole purpose of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim was to be able to get the Torah by HaSinai. So Shavuos is related to Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. Then he mentions a Pasuk in Parashas Emer, where it says, Ki B'Sukah Se Shafti Yisna Yisrael, Be'etziyach HaSam Mitzrayim, that the Abish are put us in Sukkahs on the way out of Mitzrayim, and therefore also the Antif of Sukkahs is connected to Mitzrayim. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So all three Regalim are connected to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So therefore the Shvisa of Yom Tiv is Zeichel Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So Shvis, Shvis, Shmita is different than Yom Tiv. Which Yom Tiv is Zeichel Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. But Shmita the Shavah Bazel LaShvisa the Shabbos. Let's reread that because I stopped in the middle. Shvisa lezecher ma'is b'reishes b'riya se'elam v'sheinu b'zeh shvisa the yantiv the yes b'zecher etzies mitzrayim avol ein b'zecher ma'is b'reishes yantiv has etzies mitzrayim has zecher etzies mitzrayim but doesn't have ma'is b'reishes and when it comes to shmita he's telling you you have to rest on shmita zecher le'ma'is b'reishes just like Shabbos also has zecher le'ma'is b'reishes which yantiv does not. This is what Rashi is trying to tell us that on Shemitah it should be for the sake of Hashem, just like by Shabbos Bereshis. The purpose is to the intent of Rashi is to tell me that when I have in mind that I'm doing it for Hashem, when I am resting in Shemitah, he oisa kavana shem b'Shabbos Bereshis zeicher lemaisa Bereshis bria so el lemaisheshes yomim b'bi mesvi Shabbos. Is the same kavanah that I have in Shabbos Bereshis, which is to remember that Hashem created the world in six days and rested on Shabbos. So this is a, a, a beautiful uh, 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 twist, if you will, where we were talking about Shabbos la Hashem, and all of a sudden, by 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 emphasizing the word Shabbos Bereshis, the Rebbe teaches us that Rashi is coming to tell me that when it says Shabbos La Hashem by, Shviz, by Shemitah, he's telling me that on Shemitah I should rest just like I rest on Shabbos. And just like when I rest on Shabbos L'Shem Hashem, it's because Hashem created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. So too on, Shvi, on Shemitah, I'm resting on Shemitah because Hashem created the world in six days and rested on Shabbos. And this explains our first question of why Rashi has to say L'Shem Hashem. And the Teras Kayanim doesn't explain anything because Rashi is saying the shame Hashem Kishem Kishem Shnei B'Shabbos Bereishis. He's Rashi telling us the whole thing. He's telling us that on Shabbos and Shemitah you have to rest but for the same purpose, for the same kavana as Shabbos. Mashein Kain, Mashein Kain. The Teras Kayanim is is. Uh, is comparing is just telling me that I learn Shemitah from Shabbos with regards to taste of and not vice versa. 
And that's why we said already earlier, we explained the question too, that's why that Teres Kerenim is Maidech, because he wants to make this point that we're learning Shabbos, Shmita from Shabbos Bereshis. And that's why, and we already also explained question Gimel, why the Teres Kerenim is on the second Shabbos Lashem and Rashi is on the first Shabbos Lashem, because Rashi is coming in the Pshut Shal Mikra, and in Pshat you explain the first one. And when you come to Adrasha, the first one is Pshat, the second one is Drasha, and therefore the Teres Kerenim explains the second one. And, and basically, we've answered all of our questions, and we now understand this Rashi and the dif- differences between Rashi and Teras Kernu. And Oy Zayin is going to introduce another concept, which is going to be explained based on the explanations that we came up until here, that primarily this Nekuda, that Shabbos Bereshis means that Shabbos, we are resting, Zeichel Lemaise Bereshis. Based on this, in the way we explain the word Shabbos Bereshis, that Shabbos, you're resting. Yes, Levi Rashi Tamuha. We can explain a Rashi, a questionable Rashi. Says in the seventh day you should rest. Peter Rashi Mechilte Rashi explains based on the Medrash the Mechilte. He says, "Af b'shan Ashvi is late. Kar Shabbos Bereishis mimekayma. Even in the seventh year, do not uproot Shabbos, the regular Shabbos, the regular seventh day of the week from its place. Meaning to say that you have to observe Shabbos even during Shvius. Shleitei my person shouldn't say, Ho yil v'cholashon no kruya Shabbos." Since the whole year is referred to as Shabbos, the whole Shemitah is called Shabbos, you don't have to do extra Shabbos in the middle of Shemitah. So therefore comes the Pasuk and says that even during Shemitah, you have to rest on Shabbos. Just because you're using the terminology Shabbos on the rest of the year, why would I think that because of that I shouldn't keep Shabbos for the whole year? But now it's going to make perfect sense. Now that we understand what the word Shabbos Bereshis means, now we're going to understand what this, what this Rashi is telling us. We explained earlier that the reason why a person rests on Shabbos, on a regular Shabbos, there's two reasons. One is we're resting to remember, to remember that the Abisha created the world on Shabbos, in six days and rested on Shabbos, and therefore it's called Shabbos Bereshis. Shabbos to remind us of Bereshis. The second reason is to remember the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Rashi. And Rashi explains how Shaykhis the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim le Shabbos in that Parshas Vayas Chana where, where, where it says this Lashem was the Chayat HaKiyeva the Yisra Vayas Mitzrayim. Alkein Tzivcha Hashem Alekecha Lashem Zasim HaShabbos. So what does Rashi say? Rashi says, Almanas Kein Pada'acha was on the condition, on this condition were you released, were you redeemed from Mitzrayim. Shatir le Eved that you should be his Eved, his servant, and keep his mitzvahs. Now the Rebbe makes a very interesting point over here. There's no direct connection between Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim and resting on Shabbos. It's a general idea. I took you out of Mitzrayim, you owe me. You owe me, you're my Eved, you owe me to listen to me. Hainu. So basically, what does it come out? Shatam l'tzivu yishmir Shabbosu. What is the reason for the commandment of Shmita Shabbos? As it says in the first says, the reason why we're resting on Shabbos is because Hashem rested on the first Shabbos of creation. The Zechel Etzias Mitzrayim and the fact that we're remembering Etzias Mitzrayim who tam lekiu ma mitzvah she mitztav mishum Zechel Ma'ase Bereishis is the reason why we have to fulfill the mitzvah that was commanded because of Shabbos Bereishis. Why was it commanded to us? Because Hashem rested on Shabbos. Why do I have to fulfill this commandment? Is because I owe it to Hashem because He took me out of Mitzrayim. So there's there's two reasons for resting on Shabbos, but one is a reason for the commandment. The other is the reason for why I have to fulfill that commandment. Therefore, I would think if, the, if it boils down to the whole reason why I ha, why Hashem commanded us to keep Shabbos is because of Zeichel Then, if the whole 
if the whole year is called Shabbos, which means the whole year is already a Zeichel and every day of the year, I'm remembering the fact that the Abish created the world in six days and rested on Shabbos. I would think that I don't need a, a regular seventh day Shabbos. So what's going to be added on Shabbos? I already know on Friday or on Tuesday that I'm not doing, I'm not going to the field because Hashem created the world in six days and rested on Shabbos and Hashem is the creator of the world and therefore I rest on Shviz. What is Shabbos adding? In other words, now that I understand that Shabbos Bereshis means that Shabbos is based on Zeichel and Maise Bereshis, then if the whole year is called Shabbos and I'm remembering Maise Bereshis, then what do I need a Shabbos for? I have the whole year as Shabbos. Mulamad HaKasuv and that's where the Pasuk has to come to tell me that no, it doesn't work like that. That even during the year of Shemitah, there has to be a year, or has to be, you have to keep Shabbos. Even though the whole year is taka called Shabbos, I will be poyo ein During the year of Shemitah, the only area where we're actually resting is from working in the field. Therefore, because of that, when does a person actually remember that it's Shabbos and Zeichel, that it's a Shmita and Zeichel and Maise Bereshis? Would be only during the time that he would normally do the Malacha in the field, and only a person that's a farmer, only a person that actually works the land. So now, when he can't work the land, then he'll say, "Oh, Zeichel Maise Bereshis." But the Shvisa on Shabbos takes me for the whole 24 hour period and I can't do any Malacha and therefore it affects any kind of person, not just the person that works the land, but any person who does any kind of malacha remembers for these 24 hours that it's Zeichel and Maise Bereshis. V'oyitshes b'shabbos ga mitzvahs chiyuviyah is also there are positive mitzvahs, the mitzvah of Kiddush, and, 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 and mitzvahs like that that I have to do on Shabbos in the positive, so I'm not just remembering Shabbos but in Maise Bereshis through not doing malacha, I'm also remembering Shabbos Maise Bereshis through doing certain things. So therefore, it's taken not enough. I need more. But the Havah is would have been good because I, I, the whole point is Zechel Ma'is And I have... And then comes in Pasuk and says we need more than just, uh, you know, the uh, Zechel Ma'is that you get from not working the field. So the Havah is that you have to keep Shabbos, regular Shabbos during Shemitah. But, uh, but, but the question was, why, what's the Havah Now I understand the Havah if, if you didn't tell me that Shabbos Bereshis is Zeichel Ma'is Bereshis, then I don't understand the connection. What's the question between Tuesday and Shabbos? Tuesday is Shemitah, Shabbos is Shabbos. But if the whole reason why I'm resting on Shabbos and Shemitah is Zeichel Ma'is Bereshis, then Tuesday I already have Zeichel Ma'is Bereshis. So why does Shabbos have to be any different than Tuesday? And if the boss gets to say yes, there, 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 there's more on Shabbos than the rest of the year. And with that, we we, we conclude the, the the Rashi and the the Nigla aspect of. The sikh. In Ishkhas, we're going to learn a powerful lesson, a Yena Shaltaira, with the fact that on Shabbos we are we are resting from all types of malacha. And that the things that we do do that are permissible are actually part of honoring Shabbos. From the Teda, the wine of Teda, the deeper, the juice of Teda. In this Rashi, the resting and the sanctity of Shabbos it encompasses the person and envelops the person, or imbues the person, the entire mitzvah, the entire entity of the person. Called Pratov, every aspect, every detail. Even the, even the person's material needs are also part of Shabbos. That Shabbos is supposed to enjoy yourself. Even the Tainug, even the eating and drinking on Shabbos is all part of enjoying Shabbos. Even though during the days of the week, worldly matters, and permissible matters should be only uh, that which is necessary. 
And if he's involved in them just for the sake of leisure, for the sake of pleasure, it's considered extras and is osir, and is not a, 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 the proper thing to do. On Shabbos, it's not a problem. On Shabbos, you can enjoy yourself. Why? Because the Kedusha of Shabbos is drawn down even into the person's material matters. And therefore you have to enjoy it. And Shabbos, Shabbos has the power to elevate your Gashmias. And therefore things that during the week we don't engage in because it's tam moistness, it's extras. And it's not necessary on Shabbos we do engage in it because it is, it is Shabbos is elevating it. And Rashi is being merame Shabbos Lashem L'Shem Hashem, just like it said Shabbos Bereishis. He's Rashi is telling us that Shvisa the Shvis he laid actually Lash Shvisa mi Melacha that the Shvisa the resting that we do in the year of Shmita shouldn't just be in the negative of what I'm not doing the fact that I'm resting from doing Melacha lehafri shasasim minyani aveda saaret to separate to refrain the person to refrain from in being involved in the work of the land but a person in Shemitah should rest as he would rest on Shabbos meaning to say to draw down the holiness of Shvius even into the fruits and into the into the matters of the land similar to the Aveda of bringing Hashem of knowing Hashem in, in, in your own paths in your own ways in your own day to day routines even there you should bring Hashem into that in other words, the comparison of Shabbos and Shvi is just like Shabbos. It's not just that I don't do Malacha, but I actually engage in elevating the entire person and even his material matters could be elevated on Shabbos and can become holy and part of a mitzvah. So too on Shvi is, there is an Indian in elevating the material matters of, Sh- of Shvi is that not just to re- refrain from uh, engaging in Malacha, but also to find a way in the year of Shvi is, I don't know if this is punkt of pshat, but yes, the person is not doing his malacha. He's not involved in, in going to the field every day and planting and sowing and doing the things he has to do in the field. He has more time to bring this tabish into the world. He could elevate the world. He could go home if show him. He could, uh, he, could, he, he could learn more Teda, teach more Teda, bring more getlachkeit, more godliness into the world. So it's not just about not doing avoid, not doing malacha. It's a malacha sasada. It's also about bringing kedusha into the world. Al Pisa move on. And now we have a sort of a, 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 you know, reverse a turnaround. Till now we're saying that all the premise of the Sikha is that we're learning Shviyas from Shabbos. Shabbos is the primary, uh, which we do every week, and Shviyas we learn from Shabbos. So Al Pi Halacha we learned that there's no that there's no taste for Shviyas. Al Pi Chzidus we learned that there's an Indian in being Maila, the, the Inyani Ha'ilam during the year of Shviyas. But Al Pi Zemuvu and Nais Tessi is going to tell us she Kashem she is Maila b'Shabbos legabi Shviyas kach is Maila b'Shviyas legabi Shabbos. Based on this, we're going to come to the conclusion that just like there's a Maila, there's an advantage of Shabbos over Shviyas. So too that on Shabbos everything is being elevated and on Shviyas a person has to work on that but, it, but it's not ready made. So too there's a mile in Shviyas the Gabi Shabbos. B'yoyim ha-Shabbos mis'allah ha-adam v'chaloyilam On Shabbos the person and everything in the world is being elevated. V'sambatin yechiyach the, the Sambatin river that during the week it, 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 it's, it's very rough there's things flying from it and it's, uh, it's doing a, a bunch of... Uh, a lot of stuff is going on over there, but it stops on Shabbos. So, so it's just a, a proof that the world is different on Shabbos. The Cholayilamis and the Shabbos nesur kol malachas and Shabbos you can't do any malacha. Gam kol tzrach of agashmi and minyan shalay negen ikshu mitzvah kinis kilel and even those things that are generally considered a person's basic needs on Shabbos they're considered oyneg and they're part of Shabbos. So on Shabbos everything is elevated. You say the mizu b'shvius, but shvius has an advantage. The inyan of the shavsa. 
Shlishi's issue, if Shlishi's concept is that the Oret should rest, Laham Shicha Shabbos, Lashem Binyonim Arsim Shalay to draw down Shabbos into his worldly matters. Kifishem Bedarget Eretz, as they are still in the form of Eretz, Arsius Earthliness. Shadirak Lehev Sidvilis Chedev Chulun Nasru. And Shvi'is, the only thing that's also on Shvi'is is to do business with with the 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 uh, the the agricultural with the produce but all other types of material matters material engagements are permissible on shvius so shvius there's much more arzius than there is on shabbos there's much more earthliness much more worldliness than there is on shabbos so shabbos everything is elevated even the world is elevated but on shvius it's not elevated that much and therefore the person has the opportunity to draw down holiness into shvius into the world during Shvius. Oidzeis, Leidak be Michael and Yoni Adam Kenu, and Legam be Michael Behema. And Shvius, even Michael Behema, is affected. The Achenasa Lachem Lachla, the Gamer of the Behemtach of Lachaya the Gamer. In Shvius, when it says that you could eat, it, it, it compares the person and the Behema and the Chaya. And from this we learn, Kashakala Lachaya, Kala Laadam, that if the Chaya. In the year of Shvi'is, there's a comparison between the human and the animal because the elokus is so strong. On Shabbos, the world is being elevated. So once it's being elevated, you can't. You, the the, the gilu is lamata is not so strong because everything gets lifted up to heaven to spirituality, and it all becomes part of Shabbos, and the world remains world. On Shvi'is. We're, Shavsa, Aret, Shabbos, Lashem, we're bringing down the Shvisa into Aretz. So up, even when I'm engaging in Melacha, which I can't do on Shabbos and I could do on Shvius, I'm bringing down a Lakus into that Melacha. And even the Chayas and the Behemus are different in Shvius because of the Gilu that's being brought down the Mata. And this is the lessons, one of the lessons. That we learn with regards to the mitzvah of Shvius in the persons Ruchnis de Kaveide, Gam be Chutz Laaretz, Ve Gam be Even when you're in Chutz Laaretz, and even in Galus, which technically Shvius doesn't doesn't apply in Chutz Laaretz, and Shvius doesn't apply in Galus, but nevertheless, there's still an element of it even in Chutz Laaretz and in Galus, as the Rebbe said in the in the, in the Febrengin that. Uh, uh, that the idea of Shvius applies b'chala takeif in full manner even today because goyim and golos cannot affect ruchnius as the as the Friedrich Rebbe said that our neshamis did not go into golos and therefore if we are here today there is a concept of Shvius that still applies to us. What is it? Kedusha sa'odom ut ve'kusi la kadosh baruch hu tzarech li yes. Leirat ba'zman of the tero tefila. Kshu kadosh mu v'dol minyan ya'elam. El legam be'esi sa'skusi buvun dechel binyan ma'atzim shalei. That the avet, the kedusha of the person and its connection, its cleaving to the Abish there should not just remain during the times of tero and tefila when he davens, when he learns. When he is somewhat removed from the world, but even when he's involved in uvdin dechel and mundane matters, even there, just like the six years receive from the seventh year, like a person might do that if you try to pour into a very small keli and you from a very strong force of water, that everything's going to fly out. So what you do is you first you pour into a larger cup. And then you go from a larger cup into the smaller cups. So too from Shvi, from Shvius, the rest of the six years are blessed. Not just the six years, um, not just the six years start. And then comes the seventh year. But Taka, when he went, went into Eretz Yisrael, it was first Shabbos Lashem, and then came the six years because, because the, the, from the six years, from the Shemitah, it blesses the next six years. So, so too, when a person does his Avoid Binyan and the Chil, a person has to bring down the Shabbos la Hashem into the, the Kedusha Likis, the holiness of Hashem, into all aspects. So now, we basically what we're saying is like this, in a certain sense, Shabbos, a regular Shabbos, we, we, we don't get a chance to affect the world. Because we're so elevated and we're so removed from Malacha, we don't get a chance. When it comes the year of Shviz, on the one and there's a certain Kedusha Shviz, there's an holiness in Shviz. 
And on the other hand, we're still doing Mulacha. We're still involved in Yonah Yolam. And therefore, in during Shviyas, we have the power to bring the Kedusha of Shviyas into the rest of the world. And also in our day-to-day life, every single day of our life, when we dive in, we're removed from the world. It's like Shabbos. But then when we go into the rest of the world, we have to take that davening, that kedusha, that holiness, we have to bring it into the world just like Shviz affects the six years that come after it. And like the Rabbi said in the Fabrengen, that through you have the union of Shviz and Aveda, when you bring this kedusha into your Aveda, you're pale the union of Geula, because the whole idea, the whole Galos came because of the lack of care in Shemitah. So when we do Shemitah, which means in today's day that we bring the Kedusha of Shviyas into our mundane matters, we are able to bring the Geulah, may it be, Bimheir of Yameinu, Amen.